Thank you, Member. I recognize the Member for Burnaby North. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I'm very pleased to have this opportunity uh, to speak uh, to this motion. And I thank the mover of the motion for, in his opening comments, making the specific connection between gender equality and labour rights and, and protections. And it's in that context that I'd like to make my comments. A few years ago, I found myself in Iceland. And the very first day there, um, I ended up having a lovely meal in one of the best restaurants in Reykjavik. And when the bill came, we realized that we hadn't taken the time to find out what the local tip tipping policy was. So we asked our server. And I remember she laughed and she said, well, you know, here in Iceland, we make pretty good wages, so we don't actually tip. But she said, we know that, that uh, tourists do, and so if you feel a need to tip, um, we're just going to put it in a pool and have a big party every so often. Well, I'm really glad that I asked because I've since learned that tipping in Iceland is an insult, as it is in many other parts of the world. In fact, nowhere in the world is tipping embedded in the pay structure to the same degree that it is in North America. Like many women, I did my stint as a server when I was young. And like many women, I had, when I was in high school, uh, worked in retail part-time, but it just didn't pay enough to get me through university. So with tips, I could earn almost enough to pay for tuition and my share of room and board. But it was not lost on me at 19 years of age that while I was scraping by on tips, the boys in my class were making better money working in construction and some of them could even go out to the oil fields in the summer. I remember one summer, I was working down east at a, uh, a nightclub that had a floor show. And it was a pretty popular place to celebrate big events like birthdays and retirements. And Mr. Speaker, you could make good money on a large party, but you needed to because a large party could occupy your entire section for the whole night. And I can't tell you how many times at the end of a long, hard shift, the guy paying the bill for maybe 20 customers would leave the same tip he would have left had he come in by himself for a quick drink and thought he was being very generous. Another summer, I was working in another part of the country, and one night, a drunk tried to follow me home. And I don't know what would have happened had a couple of good Samaritans not intervened. I put up with it. Why? Because I believed it was temporary and it was a means to an end. And because it was my only option if I was going to make it through university. Recently, I met a woman in her mid to late 40s who'd been a cocktail waitress for more than 20 years. She'd always made good money. She always had control over her life. But now, all of a sudden, she couldn't find work in her field. She no longer fit the image. And she doesn't qualify for EI because she did what she'd been doing for 20 years. She quit her job, confident she'd find another one. More than 80% of food and beverage services servers in BC are women. And most are paid a minimum wage with the, and expected to achieve a living wage by topping up their paychecks with tips. Now, many of the previous speakers across the aisle have been commending themselves for standing up for workers' rights. But I would like to remind us that that government institutionalized the practice of customers becoming responsible for a spent percentage of servers' wages when they instituted the lower wage, minimum wage, for liquor servers. Thus making, um, uh, by doing so, making the economic security of many women even more dependent on tips, more dependent on the way they look, more dependent on the way they dress, and even the way they entertain their customers. It makes women more vulnerable to sexual harassment, it sexualizes their workplaces, and it's not uncommon for women servers to be told by customers to play nice because if they don't play nice, they don't get paid. To conclude, Mr. Speaker, I did a bit of research about the history of tipping. It is believed to have started in Tudor England, 
when overnight guests in private homes would leave token amounts for their host's servants. That's right, their servants. We live in a proudly egalitarian society in Canada today. We believe we have eliminated the class system. The women who serve us our food and beverages and restaurants and bars throughout this province are not our servants. They are our equals, and they de deserve to be treated that way. Thank you. Thank you, members.